Welcome to the preaching ministry of First Cumberland Presbyterian Church of Chattanooga. This recording is simply the sermon portion of our worship service. To experience our full worship service, we encourage you and invite you to join us Sunday morning at 11 in our beautiful sanctuary located at 1505 North Moore Road. This Sunday, we celebrate our ministry of our Day Player Summer Camp and we dedicate our Day Player Summer Camp staff. And so I want you to hear this wonderful passage that is obviously relevant from Mark, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 13th verse. People were bringing children to Jesus in order that he might touch them, but the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, my first experience in uh, or of the Day Players Summer Camp was in the summer of 2015, a hot, hot July day. I was here as a candidate for the position of senior minister at First Cumberland, and they wanted me, of course, to, to get to know a little bit about the summer camp and to get to meet some of the staff, uh, particularly Jenny Ferris, who at that time was our camp director. And if you're going to meet the staff on a, a Day Players Day, there's only one place you're going to be able to go, and that is down to the pool. And so I went down to the pool as, a, as was directed out onto the pool deck and met Jenny Ferris. And we were standing there chatting as all of the wonderful chaos of camp is just swarming around us when a little girl climbed out of the pool and ran over to Jenny sort of with, with tears in her eyes and she related that another kid had been mean to her and she was so upset and Jenny just stopped everything. And Jenny got down at her level and said, tell me, what happened? And so the little girl related her sad, sad tale. And then Jim, Jenny said, well, now tell me, what do you think you can do to make this a better situation? And the little girl thought about it and, and came up with an idea. And Jenny said, I want you to go back and try that. And if it doesn't work, you can come back to me and we'll figure something else that we can do. And so the little girl turned around and went back to the pool and Jenny stood back up and she said to me, one of the things that I really want this camp to do is to help children learn how to, to manage their conflicts. We live in a culture that doesn't manage conflicts anymore and as Christians, we need to learn how to live together in harmony. And I want to teach kids that, but they've got to figure it out on their own. So I'm not going to intervene unless they just can't get it separated out or, or settled out for themselves. And at that moment, I was just thinking, wow, you know, this is a part of this church's ministry. I want to be a part of that. How wonderful that is. That day camp isn't just daycare and it's not just about fun activities for kids, but it really is about helping them be able uh, to, to, to be wonderful citizens and wonderful Christians in our world. Well, fast forward a couple of years and Virginia Card, who was the woman who founded the Day Players Camp more than 60 years ago, passed away. She had been the director of the camp for years and years and years. And at the end of uh, the funeral, right here in this room, a woman came up to me. And she said, I was a camper here in the 1970s. And I was a camper for three or four years during three or four of the worst years of my life. My parents' marriage was falling apart, but it was kind of falling apart in slow motion. And so it took three or four years. And everything at home was always full of tension and arguments and pain. I felt like that I was somehow to blame for their troubles. And I felt like maybe they didn't love me because I felt like somehow I was to blame. And they didn't have time for me because they were so busy arguing with each other. And when I came to summer camp, Ms. Card almost became another mother to me. She took the time to love me and let me know that she loved me and to let me know that God loved me. And, and, and really, in some ways, anything that is good in me now is because of the ways that Virginia Card was my mother at summer camp for those three or four summers. Wow. 
Well, let's fast forward again a, a couple of years. And, and now I am here and I am leading chapel. And, and one day we were doing an activity out in the pool. And I don't remember the, the theological point of this activity, but I had uh, four different colors of balls, green and blue and yellow and red. And I was passing out a ball to each kid who was sitting there on the pool deck. And then they were going to throw the balls into the pool. And whichever color they had, that was their team. And then they were to go and, and get as many balls as they could of their color and see which team could get all of their balls out of the pool first. And so I'm walking down the pool deck giving the kids uh, a colored ball. It's kind of trying to keep it uh, pretty random. And inevitably what happened is I would hand a ball to a kid. Let's say it was a red ball. And the kid that they were sitting next to would say, can I have red too because I want to be on team with my friend. And I would say, no, 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 no. That's not what this is about. This is about us all being together but also being kind of mixed up together. And so you're not going to get red. And I would make sure that that kid got some other color. Well, that summer we had a camper who was a kind of a difficult camper. Well, let's be honest. Every summer we have several campers who are difficult campers for, for lots of different reasons. But this young woman had some physical disabilities and some other problems, and she could be a handful. And Ruby Quattrochi, who was one of our other campers, decided she took it upon herself that she was going to be a friend to this child who was kind of a difficult child. And, and I watched Ruby throughout the summer uh, care for this child and find ways to include this child and really be this child's friend. And as I'm going down the pool deck passing out the balls, I came to the, the more difficult child first and I remember for some reason that I had a yellow ball and I handed her a yellow ball. And Ruby looked up at me and she said, can I have a yellow ball too? And I almost said to Ruby, no, 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 I'm trying to mix you all up and that's not what this is all about. And then I realized what Ruby was doing. She knew that if she was on the team with this other girl, she could help her, she could assist her, and she could make it a better experience for her. And I said to Ruby, oh, Ruby, yes, I know what you're doing. And I handed Ruby that yellow ball so that she could be on the team with that young woman. Well, all three of those stories are, are stories about everything that I want day players to be about. And they all three connect, I think, in a wonderful way to the story that I read to you a little while ago from the Gospel of Mark. One of my mentors years ago said that whenever we're reading in the Gospel of Mark, we need to pay attention when Mark gives us a detail, particularly a detail that the other Gospel writers don't give. Mark is the shortest of all the Gospels, just a little more than half as long as the other three Gospels. And Mark's favorite word is immediately. Jesus does something and then immediately he goes somewhere else. And he does something and immediately he's off someplace else. It's a fast-paced Gospel. It's a short Gospel. There's not room for extraneous words. And so anytime he gives us a detail, we need to pay attention to it. The classic example of this is when Jesus feeds the 5,000. In Matthew and Luke and John, uh, Jesus uh, gets the five loaves and the two fish, and then he says to the disciples, uh, tell the people to go and sit down, and the disciples go and do that. But in Mark, he gets the five loaves and the two fishes, and he says, tell the people to sit down on the green grass. The green grass. There, there's a detail we need to pay attention to. Why would Mark tell us that Jesus says, sit in the green grass? Well, almost certainly... Mark is trying to make us think of that psalm that is the most familiar of all psalms. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He's going to provide my needs. Jesus is about to provide those people with the food that they need. And then what does it say? He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Mark is telling us Jesus is God. Jesus is the Lord who is our good shepherd and who is going to take care of our needs. Well, we get the same kind of a thing in this passage that I read to you uh, this morning. Jesus is uh, very busy and people are bringing children to him to be blessed. And at that time, people would like to bring children to a rabbi and let, let the rabbi uh, lay their hand on them and bless them. And it was almost a, a sort of a magic thing. Maybe they would, that would impart some kind of magic protection over the child. And the disciples want nothing to do with this. They don't want to, that, that magic piece just isn't good theology. Jesus is way too busy doing other things to mess with a bunch of children. And so they're just telling the, the, the parents, no, go away. Jesus doesn't have time. And Jesus gets indignant with them in uh, both Matthew and in Luke as well as in Mark. Uh, this this uh, story doesn't actually appear in the Gospel of John. 
And then uh, both Matthew and Luke, we are told that Jesus says, let the little children come to me, just as he does in Mark. And then he says to them, or he, or he does, he, he lays his hands on them and he blesses them. But what does Mark say? Let the little children come to me. And then Mark says, and Jesus took them up in his arms and laid his hands on them and blessed them. That extra little detail, he took them up in his arms. Now, what is Mark trying to tell us? I think that Mark is trying to tell us that Jesus took time with those kids. He took time to, to get down on their level and say, tell me why you're crying, what's going on, and let me help you out with this situation. He took time to say, I love you and God loves you. And it doesn't matter what's going on in your home or maybe it matters, of course, what's going on in your home. But I want you to know there's a greater reality. I love you and God loves you. Jesus wants to say to them, I'm going to be your friend and I'm going to take the time to be with you. And I actually imagine Jesus playing with those kids, maybe for the rest of the afternoon, running around and playing tag with the kids, wrestling with them, because that's the way we bless kids. We bless kids by spending time with them and letting them know that we love them. Well, that is our task this summer. Our task isn't simply to provide fun activities for kids. Our task isn't to uh, have a place for kids to go during the summer that will keep them out of trouble. Our task is to take time to love kids and to bless them and to let them know that God loves them as well. Jenny and Virginia and uh, um, Ruby and Jesus are all wonderful examples of this and we need to follow their examples, Jesus most of all. Because if we do that, we're going to be helping kids and we're going to be making a lifetime difference in their lives. One of the reasons that this story surely is in the Bible is because it made a difference in those kids' lives, not just for that day, but for all of their lives, perhaps even for all of eternity. And that is what we are doing as well. So that perhaps when uh, it comes time for our funeral, someone will say, you know, that camp counselor or that camp director or that camp pastor or whoever, they made a difference in my life even up to this moment. That's what we're called to do and that's what we can do. But that's also not a call just for our camp staff, but it's a call for our entire church and all those who care about this ministry. Let me make a bold statement and a bold request. If you, even if you have nothing else to do with our day players other than knowing about it, uh, will pray for our camp, that will make a difference. Pray for our staff. Pray for the children. Pray that our staff will be able to discern which children they need to show love to, which children they need to t spend extra time with. If you are praying for us, that God will show us discernment, that God will give us the love and the joy and the patience that we're going to need to work with these children, that will make a difference. And, I, and the bold uh, request I want to make is to pray, and the bold statement I want to make is if you don't pray, we may not have the resources we need to do our job. The Lord is our shepherd. The Lord gives us everything that we need, but that may come through your prayers, through you lifting us up in prayer. And so I invite you to do that. And to that end, let us all pray together, both for this ministry and for all the ministries in which we're engaged. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, thank you for coming to each of us as we come to you as little children and for taking us up in your arms and for laying your hands on us and for blessing us. I ask you to do that for each one who will be a part of this Day Players Camp this summer. And for each one who is hearing my voice now. That we would experience your love. And then we would experience your commissioning. And we would go out to be the arms and the feet and the love that you have for people in our world. And we pray these things in your wonderful name. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this message from the preaching ministry of First Cumberland Presbyterian Church. Once more, we hope you'll join us in person Sunday at 11 a.m. for worship.